In the heart of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a young artist would rise from local fame to international stardom. His name is Wiz Khalifa. Wiz has been at the forefront of the hip hop game for quite some time now, but some of you may be too young or are just maybe unfamiliar with how he got his spot in the rap game. Joe Beast was like one of the one of our first dudes who was right. like out of Pittsburgh, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So those were the dudes who I looked up to and um yeah, it's, it's cool being like one of the first niggas from Pittsburgh because we didn't really have like a, a, a style voice. or a sound, you right. know what I mean? Yes, he's had some major records over the years and has made some appearances on the big screen, but it was really his unique marketing strategy that I believe propelled him to the heights he's achieved, specifically his day-to-day -day series on YouTube. The series played a pivotal role in reshaping how hip-hop artists engage with their fans and build personal brands. Launched in 2009, the series offered an unfiltered, behind-the-scenes look at Wiz's daily life, from studio sessions to tour moments creating a new form of artist transparency. It helped humanize him and cultivate a deeply loyal fan base, blending his laid-back, weed-friendly lifestyle with his creative process. This approach not only enhanced his rise to fame, but also influenced the new generation of artists to embrace vlogging, social media, and authenticity as central elements of their brand identity. Yo, this is DFX Studios and we create YouTube documentaries and video essays on YouTube. Today we'll be covering the career of Wiz Khalifa and how he became a pivotal artist during the mixtape era as he was one of the first to use the power of the internet to catapult his career into superstardom. We'd appreciate it if you hit that like button and please subscribe. Khalifa was born Cameron Jabril Thomas on September 8th, 1987 in Minot, North Dakota to parents serving in the military. His parents divorced when he was three years old and he was described as a military brat growing up. He would frequently move around with his parents living in Germany, the United Kingdom, and Japan before settling in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He would go on to attend Taylor Alderdice High School. Soon after moving to Pittsburgh, Khalifa began diving into the world of hip hop, writing and performing his own songs. His stage name is derived from the Arabic word Khalifa, meaning successor, and Wiz, which was short for wisdom. When appearing on MTV's When I Was 17, Khalifa explained the significance behind his stage name. He stated, the story behind my name is I would always hang out with older guys and I was good at everything I do. So they would be like, he's a young whiz. So that's where that came from, he recalled. And Khalifa is Arabic for successor and leader and my granddad is Muslim, so he gave me that name. He felt like that's what I was doing with my music. He would go on to get a tattoo of his stage name on his 17th birthday. Wiz wasted no time getting his rap career in motion as he started recording music at a local studio called ID Labs when he was just 15. Impressed by the young teen's talent, Eric Dan, aka Edan, the owner of ID Labs, offered him an internship in exchange for studio time. Dan, being a veteran of the Pittsburgh hip hop scene, would help develop and mentor the young artist early on in his career. Benji Grinberg, the president over at Pittsburgh based Rostrum Records, first heard about the rapper around 2004 after he heard him on a compilation mixtape featuring a number of Pittsburgh artists. Grinberg thought that young Wiz stood out. Once Grinberg finally met him at 16 years old, he immediately wanted to work with him, telling Hit Quarters, even though he wasn't all the way developed, you could just tell that he was a diamond in the rough, and that with some polishing, guidance, and backing, he could become something special. Khalifa signed to the label shortly shortly after and began a seven year period of artist development. Wiz would go on to release his first mixtape titled Prince of the City, Welcome to Pistolvania in 2005. Being young and naive, he figured after he dropped his first mixtape that it would get everybody in the city to ride with him, but of course that wasn't the case. Although he didn't get the buzz he was looking for, he continued to work releasing his first full length studio album titled Show and Prove the following year in 2006. This album garnered some attention for the up and coming artist as he was declared an artist to watch that year in Rolling Stone magazine. Following the release and after building some hype around the project, Khalifa would sign a distribution deal with Warner Brothers Records. After signing to Warner, he would release two mixtapes through Rostrum titled Grow Season and Prince of the City 2. This is where Wiz really found his style as he debuted his signature P chain, he started getting more tattoos, and he started smoking a ton of weed. This made the artist unique as there wasn't a lot of people smoking weed on camera during that time and tattoos weren't as prevalent in hip hop as it is today. In order to generate hype around his debut release with Warner, Wiz had to prove he could produce a single. That's when he and Rostrum would come out 
with the single Oh Yeah. Now, if you're like me, you might remember this song getting played on MTV back in the day. The record had some success as it would go on to chart on Billboard and get him some more global notoriety, but it still wasn't enough to earn the confidence from Warner that he was ready to release the project but that still didn't deter the young artist. He kept his foot on the gas, releasing another two mixtapes, Star Power in late 2008 and Flight School in April 2009. It was actually the project Flight School that put him in connection with rapper Currency after Wiz reached out to him via MySpace. After realizing how much they had in common, he decided to stay at his house for the summer in New Orleans, crashing out on his couch so they can work on a collaborative project. That project was titled How Fly, which would eventually be released in August of 2009. On this project, he would experiment with a more melodic style, alternating between singing and rapping, as that was becoming more prevalent after the release of Drake's So Far Gone. So although he was putting in the work and continuing to push out projects, Warner still didn't see enough traction to give him the green light to release his debut album. After multiple delays, Khalifa officially parted ways with Warner in July of 2009. Grinberg would make a statement regarding the departure saying, We feel that this divorce is the best thing for both parties at this juncture, and we appreciate the leniency Warner has shown with our release. We are excited to be independent again. At this point, this was a very pivotal time for Young Wiz's career. He had just parted ways with one of the major labels in the industry and was struggling to break through to the mainstream. But the young artist had one thing going for him that at the time was very unique. It was a case of being at the right place and perfect timing. You see, Wiz was in the middle of a technical renaissance where connecting with your audience became easier than ever. Sites like Twitter, MySpace, and YouTube were still brand new and he was using it to connect with his fans like nobody before him. He would take his time to respond to fans, talk with them one on one, and respond to their comments frequently encouraging them to engage with him and follow him on every platform. This was a new and unordinary approach to the rap game and Wiz was one of the first to capitalize on it using these tools to help garner his audience. He was a major part of a new class of rappers that would use the internet to push their projects, completely shifting the game for generations to come. But I believe his most genius move came when he decided to start his day-to-day -day series on YouTube. On March 28, 2009, he would drop his first ever episode. The series name serves as a double entendre, meaning these are videos about his day-to-day -day and his day-to-day -day life in general. The videos were some of the first vlogs on the internet used by the rapper to document his career, shows, and life as an up-and-coming artist. This allowed for him to put on a display of his whole personality and fans were eating it up. It allowed fans to get to know him on a more personal level and it became a pivotal piece for his rise to stardom. Fresh off the release of his mixtape with Currency, How Fly, and regaining independence, Khalifa's output was on another level at this time as he proceeded to drop project after project, releasing another mixtape a few months later titled Burn After Rolling, then releasing his second studio album, Deal or No Deal, that same month. He continued to pick up a ton of traction, doing numbers on popular mixtape sites such as Dat Piff, blog sites, as well as mainstream publications such as XXL, making maybe the most legendary edition of all time of their freshman list alongside Nipsey Hussle, J. Cole, Freddie Gibbs, and Big Sean, to name a few. He was dubbed the 2010 Rookie of the Year by The Source magazine, alongside Rick Ross, and he began a 20-date tour with rapper Yellow Wolf titled The Deal or No Deal Tour. But it was in fact his following project that absolutely shot Khalifa into rap superstardom. On April 14th, 2010, Khalifa dropped his classic mixtape, Kush and Orange Juice, through Rostrum Records. The mixtape went absolutely bonkers after it became the number one trending topic on Twitter and even ranked number one on Google's hot search trends. In an interview with MTV's Mixtape Daily, Wiz Khalifa stated that Kush and Orange Juice would be the title for this release because it's perfect for Wake and Bake. The mixtape the tape's cover artwork pays homage to David Ruffin's 1980 album, Gentleman Ruffin, and the subject matter mainly consists of partying, women, and marijuana. From there, he began selling out venues on tour, winning Best New Artist awards, and gaining the respect from his friends and peers throughout the game. After the success of Kush and OJ, Khalifa began working on an album and was weighing his options, but had not yet decided on a label to distribute it. Khalifa confirmed to MTV on July 30th that he was signing a deal with Atlantic Records. 
After all these years of putting in work, Wiz was now primed and ready to drop his debut album through a major label and he did not disappoint. Khalifa would go on to release the lead single for the project, Black and Yellow, a nod to his hometown's team colors on September 14th, 2010. And it's safe to say that the record was a huge success. The song would peak at number one on the Billboard Hot 100, becoming his first number one single in the US. In the year after its release, the record continued to gain new life as it would spawn a bunch of remixes, parodies, and remakes. In 2011, at Super Bowl 45, which featured the Packers and his hometown team, the Steelers, the track would serve as their theme song. Even the Packers would use Lil Wayne's remix to the song Green and Yellow as theirs. The record earned Khalifa his first Grammy nominations for Best Rap Song and Best Rap Performance. Wiz would go on to release his debut album with Atlantic titled Rolling Papers in March of 2011, selling roughly 200,000 first week. Now you would think with all of this press, he would just go on and drop his project out the gate. Well, Wiz actually pulled a move that nobody expected when he released his mixtape Cabin Fever just a few weeks prior and ultimately the move worked. His fans to this day considers the project one of his best works. Since then, Wiz has had an insane career arc, dropping smash records, successful albums, appearing in films, and even creating his own strand of weed during that time. He continues to sell out shows and is still very much relevant event to this day. Now if you've made it this far and you want to support us, please hit the like button below and please subscribe. Also let us know down in the comments who you'd like us to cover next. If you'd like this come up story, we have another video here that you might be into titled The Rise of J. Cole. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.